As a student, you're drawing upon the work of writers, researchers, and academics in much the same way as they drew upon the work of others before them. So when you're writing a paper at university, you're expected to be using information, theories, hypotheses, research, data, or ideas from people around the world. And as part of that process, you need to give credit to those people and their work. By referencing your sources, you'll be performing two very important tasks. You'll be showing the quality of the information you've used, and you'll be showing that you're not claiming somebody else's work as your own. Any accusations of plagiarism, using somebody else's work and passing it off as your own, is treated seriously within the university, even if it's unintentional. We offer advice about plagiarism and referencing in Digital Essentials under Complete and Submit Assignments, Write, Cite and Submit. Obviously, you must reference when you're quoting word for word, regardless of whether it's a whole paragraph or simply a phrase. You should also reference when you're paraphrasing, when you're using what somebody else has written or said, but have rewritten it in your own words. Similar to paraphrasing, you need to include a citation when you summarize somebody else's argument or idea. And you need to include a reference when using resources created by others, such as images, tables, data, audio, video, etc. Before you decide which referencing style to use, check with your lecturer or supervisor. There are many referencing styles available, with most being either an author date style or a numbered style and there are literally thousands of variations within those two options. Basically, there are two elements, the citation and the bibliography. The citation is a number or a note in the text of the paper, and it corresponds to a more detailed list, either at the bottom of the page or at the end of the paper. Strictly defined, the bibliography lists all the works that have been used in the research for the paper, and a reference list only includes the works cited, but these two definitions are often used interchangeably. Importantly, all styles require the details of a publication to be recorded in a standardized layout that makes it easy to identify the original document. In every case, the important details are the author or authors, often the list is ordered alphabetically by the first author, the title or two titles if the work is part of a larger publication, such as an article in a journal or a chapter in a book, in these cases, emphasis is normally given to the title of the journal or the book and the date of publication, although this can sometimes be difficult to determine, particularly if it's a website. For publications that come out periodically, like a journal or a book series, most referencing styles require the volume and issue numbers. Many journals and books are accessed electronically, so most referencing styles require the URL or the DOI or the name of the database from which you downloaded the article or the book. Some details that are often needed for books but not for journals are the place of publication, the publisher, and the editor if the book is an edited publication. For citing films, images, tweets, podcasts, etc., you'll need to pay close attention to the instructions for your referencing style. And be sure to check with your lecturer or supervisor which referencing style you should be using.